What up? This is Robert Ory. Ory, three pointer. Buries it. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable! Oh, this guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from downtown. What is going on, Big Shot Bob? Loving life. Living life. Uh, it's uh, it's episode two this week. Loving it. Two. Episode two of the Big Shot Bob. Amigos. Yeah, man. Me and you, hey. in it together <laughs> till the end of the line, baby. We're Cap and Bucky. I got you till I'm with you till the end of the line. Too many Marvel movies. Uh, it is the shoot around this week. If you ever got a question for the shoot around or a topic or something we didn't get to in the Tuesday show, you can always send it our way at Big Shot Bob Pod on uh, Twitter and Instagram and pretty much all over the place. Uh, something we did not talk about. Uh, was we did talk about the NFL playoffs at the end of the show, mm-hmm. but we didn't talk about Kelly Stafford. Uh, she's come up a few times on this show. Uh, this this would be the next in- incarnation of that. She believes that uh, she had to lay some proof on Lions fans. So obviously Matthew Stafford, her husband, was the mm-hmm. Lions quarterback for God, what ten years? Never twelve <laughs> years, some shit. And they never got really. They never got it done. Yeah. Um, now here we are. Detroit's in the NFC Championship game behind Jared Goff, who was the Rams quarterback. <laughs> uh, so there was a flip flop with Stafford and Goff. But Kelly Stafford, Matthew Stafford, for a very long time, were a very big part of the Detroit community. Mm-hmm. Well, she got booed off the field. They put them up on the on the screen at one point. She was walking past a group of fans, and there's video that she posted of. Um, uh, just fans going at her and going at her kids and just maybe she said taking it too far. She said, quote, this was our experience on the field. I know you're booing me, but my kids don't know the difference, even, even if I try to explain it to them. Um, she just said that, uh, you know, it was all part of sports, but anything involving her kids was no longer fair game. Is this Bush League on the part of uh, Lions fans or does, does she, she know this comes with the turf? Well, you know, fans are brutal. Fans can be great and fans can be brutal. And I think when you get to a point where you just take the two, I don't know anything about Detroit fans except for, you know, they, they're they so, supposed to be one of the nastiest fans based outside, you know, you know, the Raiders and, you know, Philly and all this kind of stuff. But you have to protect your kids in the sense you know you're going into a hostile environment. So you protect your kids. You know, look what, look what Westbrook did. He didn't take his kids in the late game, now they go to the Clippers game. So why put your kids, submit your kids to that? You know, well, but keep don't them in the, the kids suite because you know he see, has a suite. Stay in the suite. They want to see their dad play. So they're going to go to the game. They're going to see gonna, the dad play. But you have suite. to, I guess, what, yeah. insulate them a little bit from that, right? Yeah, you have to. And if you and you should, and then you should also say, you prep them. It says, you know, fan base are not really happy with your dad and what happened here and how we have. They might say a little things. And let's be honest. How old is kids? I know you got like twenty of them. Oh, you know they got a bunch of kids. Yeah, some of his all kids, girls. Are, I think they, if I'm not they, 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 I think they have four yeah, girls. They I, hear all this stuff through. Yeah, do you protect them from everything? You know, they hear it on radio. They hear it on TV. They gonna hear words. Yeah. So just you know, be a good fa- a father, good mother, and say, hey, yeah, it was some nasty stuff said. Please ignore it and understand that there are some people in this world that are mean. And there's some good people in this world, so just ignore that and, and and don't let it. You know, I know it's easier to say than to, you know have your kids. You know, man, I, I've had some things said to me, and I had to. My, it pissed my kids off. I'd be like, look at me, I'm not pissed, so don't worry about it. Don't let that bother you. Right. Um, your audio cut out. If certain things didn't go their way. Am my audio cut out? Your audio cut out for a second. Right. It's, it's back now. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying that, you know, okay. it's just one of those things where you got people be, as my son said, people be tweaking. <laughs> He's right. He's right. I mean, God, especially sports fans. And if you're mm-hmm. a if you're a kid growing up in a sports family, I feel like there needs to be a conversation at some point about that stuff. E- even before you go to a game like this, you got to go, look, okay, so here's what daddy does for a living. <laughs> there's a lot of people that really like daddy. And there's a lot of people that don't like Daddy <laughs> because of what he does and who he plays for. Daddy represents a team that a lot of people like and a lot of people don't. So that's sort of like I, you know, that's that's kind of a conversation you have to have 
probably early in their lives. And I imagine they've had that conversation at I'm some sure point. So like for me, like, yes, do fans need to be on better behaved? Sure. Of course. I mean, come on. Don't, don't boo a kid. Uh, don't boo a kid. If she's well, walking out there with her kids. You don't have to boo her, but you don't have to say nothing either. But yeah. in the same heartbeat, the kids her, should just know. Just don't say anything to the kids. Right. And the yeah. kids should know. Oh, this is just, this is the thing we talked about. I think her putting it all over social media and making a big to-do about it has put more attention on it yeah. than anything the, but, the, the kids probably said. said to the kids? Or something said to the kids? No, she said that she felt like the kids, she had to explain to the kids why they were getting booed everywhere. And I'm what like, the hell? that's a part of sports. You, and did you again? I did you not have the conversation funny. going in, going. By the way, there's a lot of people here, probably not a fan of Daddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they don't like. They're not. Daddy was here for a long time. Daddy didn't get it done, and now but the new guy did is. Did he leave on bad terms, or he no, just asked me? No, I don't think so. I think it was just you know there was there was a lot of years that Detroit had like this big potential to be a true contender, and it never got done. And you can't hang that on the feet. You put that at the feet of Matthew Stafford. But yeah, he was their really marquee good. guy for a long mm-hmm. time. So, like, if Detroit was going to do anything, it was going to be because of Matt. Um, gotcha. And, you know, we know Matt and Kelly because he's a Georgia kid. He went to UGA. We worked with mm-hmm. him for years here at the radio station when he played for Georgia. That's how long I've worked at this freaking radio station. <laughs> Dude played for Georgia. I was still here. Um, oh. So, like, he's not a bad guy, but, you know, I, I mean, fans are going to, of course, anytime a player leaves, and you just say it yourself, Westbrook. Mm-hmm. Westbrook had a short stint with the Lakers. Lakers fans will throw proverbial bricks at him every chance they get yeah. just because they weren't happy with the way he played here. And I think the fact that Matt never got the job done for them in Detroit meant he was like the focus of all their hate. And yeah. when his family's around, of course, <laughs> fans suck. And eh, sometimes they take See, it. See, that's, that's why when you like, you know, it's best to be a receiver or a running back like Barry and Calvin. You get all the love. <laughs> all the love, man. Julio Jones comes back to town here in Atlanta. Nothing but nothing but Julio jerseys, man. All over the place. Everybody loves Julio. He's playing for the Eagles. And we're just like, ah, it's fine. We still love him. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You yeah. want to be you want to be the receiver. Uh, mm-hmm. Question from Calvin. I I, have, I thought this was a great question. Mm-hmm. How often do you talk to yourself? I imagine having a podcast helps you get that stuff out of your head, but I a lot of times have to pretend I'm on the phone while I'm driving so people don't think I'm crazy because I have full-on conversations with myself. I have never related to a listener of this show more than Calvin. Yeah, no, Calvin, <laughs> I, Calvin, tint your windows, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you I, Calvin, you're not alone. It's probably half of America talks to themselves when in the car because Dude. sometimes you better to let it in, let it out, and keep it in, man. But I, 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 I have talk to myself before full, games for everything. I have full on conversations and debates with myself in the car, like constantly. Hey. We need to do, and uh, we could do a survey. How many men that are married talk to themselves after they walk out of the room oh, from their wife? All of them, hundred percent. You don't have to do the survey for that. You want me to do that shit? You know, I ain't know. doing that shit. I'm the man of this house. You know, I, I dare yeah, her I'm make the man me do this of this shit. house, and you know, I as talk you to yourself. It. Cause you, as you're doing it, and you won't say it to her face, so that's why you're talking to yourself, man exactly. of the house, man of the house. I do it all the time. I'm like, fucking tell me what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fuck on the mess. I'm gonna pay the bills in this mall. Oh no, I got it. It's fine. It's fine. Hey, should we it. do it? She's gonna tell me do it. Do it now. I'm gonna do it like in five minutes. I ain't doing it right now. I'm matter of fact, I might wait ten more minutes. Man, let me just do this shit and get it I'll out of the way. I'll just get it out of the way. I don't want to, because, because you know it ain't worth whatever's coming next. So it's like, that's fine. Good. Exactly. Uh, good. But, hey, but on the flip side of that, when you tell them to do something, that shit don't get done the next week. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Forget it. It's like the conversation never happened. Like, it never happened. Mm. Remember we you talked about that? that? No, I don't remember that. Oh, okay. Hey. We, me and my wife start recording each other when we tell us one. Like, oh, okay, no. Oh, this. God, no. You're keeping receipts? This is not yes. good. This is not going to work out. One of you is going to mm. pull one of them out one day and a phone's going to go flying across the room. <laughs> you pull that shit on me. And you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, talk to, I used to talk to myself before games and you hype yourself up. I'm and sure. You tell yourself you the, you the man. You know, you ain't missing no shots tonight. You, you know, you're protecting the paint. You don't. You talk to yourself so much. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think everybody does too. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, and that's part of the brilliance of having hands free now. Yeah. In the car, you everybody. You don't know if they're on the phone or they're just arguing with themselves. But either way, it works, oh, man. 
Or you do like most people, um, like when I you put the headphones when you walking through the airport, uh, the earbuds, and when people start like yeah. talking, you're like you don't hear me. Keep going. Yeah. Hey Robert. Yeah. Hey Robert. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I got nothing on in the headphones. <laughs> I can hear you, but I'm not paying attention to you. <laughs> I don't want to be that unaware of the world, but you're right. That's a perfect decoy. It's like, oh nope, I got my earbuds in. <laughs> Um, Jay Gruden versus RG3. I wanted to bring this up real quick. Um, this is funny. Jay Gruden used to be the coach of the when it was the Washington Redskins. They're now the Commanders. Um, mm-hmm. Him and RG3 did not have a good relationship uh, when he was there. That's obviously very public. Um, he took some shots. Uh, Jay, Jay wrote on his X page uh, on Twitter, whatever the hell you want to call it. If I ever put a quarterback through what Philly put Jalen Hurts through, I would apologize. <laughs> RG3 hit the ceiling. <laughs> he wrote back, say what? All caps. 10 T's on the what, three X, three question marks. Um, and then Jay came back and said, you weren't good enough. Kirk was better. Cleveland didn't want you. Baltimore didn't either. Quit blaming me. And then RG3 went on his podcast and eviscerated Jay Gruden, just destroyed him. Uh, because they basically all the times that RG3 went up and said, I played my best, and I need everybody to play along with me. He got killed for that in the media. Mm. But then he reveals on his podcast, you know, Jay was the one who said, you got to motivate your team by telling them they didn't play well enough. And say it in the media. Say it publicly. Make them, make them want to come out and prove you wrong. And then the minute he said that, Jay's like, I don't know what the hell that guy's doing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Threw him under thing. the bus. Everybody, I think, was on RG's side. When you didn't he play with like a torn ACL in a game, and everybody in the world says you should not be playing, and it pretty much cost him his career. Yes, it did in the playoffs. It's like, yeah, yeah I'm like, dude, game. yeah, it's the playoffs. You can't even freaking move, and that goes to show you how sometimes players can be too loyal. You know, and I guarantee if it's this day and age, he would have never oh, touched the no. field because the, the, his camp would have been like, oh, hell no. And there's too many people on NFL sidelines now that go, no, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I mean, God, mm-hmm. you see that all the time. Dude twists an ankle. You got to sit out of play. You're in the little blue tent. You got like yeah. five trainers looking at you. Yes, and that, that, that shit doesn't fly anymore. But uh, it, it, they, they obviously have a very long standing beef. Do you yeah. have any. Long standing really? beefs with him. No, besides Ainge, fuck him. He's forget him. We've talked about him uh, a million times over. But like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I, it, it doesn't even have to be sports related. No, I don't have it. You know, you don't have I'm, any I'm, beef. I'm, I'm loved by everybody. I know you are. I we knew. had a two. We, we had the two second beef with Arenas, but that was fun though for me. Oh, that wasn't even then, beef. He was mad at yeah, me. He wasn't even mad at yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I don't. I think he was he was mad at me too because he think he said I called him an idiot or whatever it was. But I have no beef with anybody. I love everybody, man. I give I'm one of those type of people where I give you the chance to fuck me over first before I I'm done with you. You know, and for me, I'm just I, I I believe in my heart that most people have good in them, and that I just I I like most people. I know people are assholes, and you just got to understand how they to are. deal with the assholes. You wipe yourself clean of assholes and you move on. So Ooh, I, don't, I like you know, that. Yeah. I might, I might write just... that down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> wipe yourself clean of assholes and move on. That's good yeah. stuff right there from Robert. Well, I Rory. just I, I just don't I have no beef. I, I I genuinely like everybody until you prove me that I shouldn't like you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I've been I've been fired a couple times. Um nothing major, but like mm-hmm. in, when you work in radio, like you you go into the industry and the first thing everybody tells you is you're gonna get fired. So yeah. I've had a couple times where I've been like, oh, that guy kind of lied to me and fired me. So I've kind of had those yeah. sort of beefs, but those are like, that's bullshit professional stuff that you get over. Yeah. You know, you get like, over. Like, like I had when um, the way I was let go with the Lakers pissed me off, but then I let that go. And then yeah. your way, the way that some things went down with the Spurs, I kind of didn't let that go, but then I let it go. Yeah. And it's like, it, and it's it's so many things that fans as a, as a professional athlete, that fans don't know. And and even doing this day and age, they think they know everything because oh, of sure, the, of course, yeah. but they really just still don't know yeah. because there's a lot of things that they don't, you the know, behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, yeah, behind the scenes. So and and at the end of the day, no matter how much money you make in, you still have feelings and you think yeah. that you should be treated a certain way. And that's with respect. And if you feel like that respect or that bond is broken, it can piss you off. And so I, I, I to me, I felt like the respect when it came to the Lakers, the way they let me go was like was was unwarranted and I, and it pissed me off and I, I held that grudge for like a long time and then when I was with the Spurs I just didn't I didn't like 
what was coming out of that camp blaming me about certain stuff, you know, and that yeah. was that was told to me, which kind of pissed me off. So there's a lot of things like that that people don't I understand. Get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. All right, we got one more, uh, a couple more questions here, and we'll wrap up shoot around. Question comes from Ray. This one's a little bit dark, but funny. Uh-oh. Uh oh. You're headed <laughs> to dark. death. You're headed to death row. What's your final request for your final meal? You know, it's. <laughs> he also I, wrote in here. Also, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Me. What did I do? I probably killed a motherfucker. I know what I mean. <laughs> probably went the after somebody got, and some ra- shit to the say. The rage was uncontrollable. I turned yeah. into the Hulk for a minute. You know, for me, I, it's like it's certain dishes. Like my mom's uh, broccoli and cheese casserole, my dad's red rice and ribs from Dreamland, um, and, and my mom's collard green and mac and cheese. It's just certain things. Like it's going to have to be. Yeah. A, a good old soul food meal, you okay. know, and it, so because I love Dreamland ribs, and I love my mom's like mac and cheese, collard greens, mm. and and my dad's red rice. So those those dishes that I, that's what I would have to have. How about you? Oh, dude, I'm I'm a basic bitch, man. Give me <laughs> a give, Philly cheese steak. Give call me, no, day. man, give me a, give me a good old chicken parmesan. Give me some chicken <laughs> parmesan, a big old plate of spaghetti. Oh mm-hmm. my god, forget it. I'm done. That's it. That's it. That's uh, all I need. So let me just say this. I, I've, I've been making food for my family like all the time. Last night, I felt so honored. Christian sent me a text because he came in tired. His legs were hurting. So he sent me a text and said, this is a top two meal, Father, because I made this um, pasta, this little, um, Italian sausage pasta last night. Okay. And he sent me like, I'm like, well, Damn. You know, I think this is my first time making it for him, and that's the reason. And he gave me, he's like, this is the top two. And all the time I be making meals, I'm thinking, I'm, doing, I'm putting him work, right? This is yeah. the first time he said top one. And even Gabrielle, Candace's daughter, she said it was good. Candace said it was oh, good. So I got a, I got a gold star you, last man. night. You, got, you my went pasta. three for three. That's not bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did that the other night. I made a spaghetti carbonara with, like, uh, chicken Ooh, and bacon in it. Carbonara. Oh, just out of control good. And I got thumbs up across. I got thumbs up from my 11-year-old. You what? do not understand the seal of approval that that takes from a child who wants chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese <laughs> for every meal. <laughs> ever. I'm gonna have to call you for your carbonara recipe because I can't. My carbonara never comes out right. The trick is the eggs, man. It's yeah. always the eggs at the end. Like you, the pasta has to be hot enough to mix it together. But if you, if it's too hot and you put the eggs in, the eggs will curdle, and then it just becomes kind of like kind of. See mm, when do you know? Sour, when do you, do you, you know? stick your finger in to figure out how hot the pasta is? How do you figure out? What, what, <laughs> yeah, you stick I do. A, no, I'm um, no, I, no, you just kind of, I just kind of watch. You let it sit for like about five minutes. Okay. If you should give it five minutes, it should be fine. But the you're like me, you just you're doing everything together at once. So it's like my uh-huh. initial instinct is great. It's ready. Dump in the eggs and start mixing. And it's like nope. Give it five minutes. Let it sit. Then okay. then do the eggs. Because if you do so, the eggs and yeah. the cheese too soon. The pasta has to be hot enough to melt the cheese, but not mm-hmm. hot enough where it curdles the eggs. So it's okay. a weird, yeah. yeah, tough dish to make. But yeah, uh, if if an eleven year old is down for it, I'm like, I'm doing. This. I love carbonara, but I can't make that shit. It's tough, man. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, ch- that's next week's on. That's on the menu for next week. Next <laughs> week, so I'll send you my carbonara mm-hmm. recipe. Um, uh, last question is coming from Jason. Uh, you both, <laughs> yeah, it's another really good. By the way, props to our listeners for these questions this week. These are great. <laughs> You both have kids. How long does the hot water last in your house? And he goes, uh, "LOL, I'm reading the story about the Bills and the Chiefs. Did you see the the story that? There's How a, do they know there was they a Chiefs, cut the hot water? Yeah, off. there was a Chiefs lineman that said that the Buffalo Bills cut the hot water off after the game after they lost. Which the stadium, I think it's Highmark Stadium, whatever the stadium, has come out and said that's bullshit." You can't turn yeah. off one hot water to one side of the building and not the other. So if we turned it off, everyone would lose it. Do you realize how cold it was in Buffalo? Oh, it was beyond <laughs> cold. The hot water it's didn't last happen. but like two showers. So if you weren't the first or second guy in, no, sorry. You're, you, exactly. You, you know, that that, happened, that used to happen to us in Denver where the water was just cold. It would happen in Boston where the water was cold. And you just deal with it. You know, you used to taking cold baths, so deal with it. So, yeah. No, I don't like that. <laughs> like, I don't like that. We used to lose hot water fast. Oh, look, I got we teenagers. Know. See, I so, grew up in the dirty south. No, we've never lost hot water. And I'm in Cali now, so um, sorry, Jason, we don't lose hot water here. Oh, man. Well, I get it. Down here in Atlanta in the cold, cold, bitter-ass cold of what we're dealing with right now, 
Yeah, we lose our hot water. No, we don't lose it quickly because I I got a I splurged on a new hot water heater because our old <laughs> one the hot water was gone in like twenty minutes. So like when we would wake up in the morning and there's kids trying to shower to get out to school and I'm trying mm-hmm. to shower and Mama's trying to shower everybody. If you, I got up early, so I was the first motherfucker in there. Uh, see, I'm the first guy in the shower. I never lose hot water. I'm just like. Uh, but see, here's the thing: what we used to do growing up when we had six people in the house and one shower. I would take my showers at night before I went to bed. So see, I had I to can't battle. do that. I can, but see, my if my grandmother was getting ready, my grandfather was getting ready, my aunt was getting ready, my mom was getting ready. You, yeah, there's no, no room for you. You last on at the list. back of the line. I had to go to the room cold like showers. This. Yeah, no, like, I get I, it. <laughs> You check when you at school, damn. I'm really stinky today because I didn't take a shower. Yeah, no. So I just started taking my shower at night. That no, way I'm I, like, okay. I Mm-mm. when I was a kid, I used to do that. I would shower yeah. at night before I went to bed. And my daughter does that now because she can't mm-hmm. get up on time to save her life to get out the door <laughs> for school. She's eleven. She's she's venturing into teenage years. This is only gonna get worse. So she showers at night. I'm fine with it. When as mm-hmm. an adult, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. I feel I wake up feeling like dirty if I don't shower. I'm like I uh my wife, she does both. She shower at night before she goes to bed, and then she shower in the oh, morning. Yeah. My wife takes a uh, bath at night. My wife goes in, yeah. takes a nice, relaxing bath at night, and then showers again in the morning. I'm like, you're too clean. <laughs> Man, I come home now. My wife is in the bathtub with wine. I'm like, um, this is my time. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, I'm about to sit here and do, look at you like this and make you get out so you can talk to me. <laughs> oh, wow. That's creepy as hell. You can't let her have exactly. a bath? No. Let her have a bath. I, I, nobody in my it's like I don't like when people have bash you want to know I cause I can't fucking fit and it's oh, not fair. this is a personal issue okay good now here's the thing my wife asked me don't why, rub it in my wife well, I, she goes why don't you take a bath I don't like there's something about just sitting in a pool of water with my own That's, filth that I'm like I'm good I don't need to just I don't need to marinate well, in my, my own. wife was shower before she gets in the bathtub oh <laughs> No, she should shower after she gets out because y'all been sitting in there just marinating in your own juices. Like I'm good. Yeah. I'm I'm not a pot roast. I, I don't need to. Make, she does it. She does it for the the jacuzzi and the heat of the oh, bath. Oh yeah, I the think same. she's just doing yeah, it yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah. But no, no. I'm my wife will yeah. lock the door when she takes a bath because she don't want me yeah. coming in there looking at her, bothering her, or disrupting anything. Hey, but can they really lock the door where you got that little thing and go? Oh, I can get in there. The lock. Oh, I can get in there. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want the wrath of shit that comes with it. The only time I uh, lock the door is when I'm taking a dump. Leave me alone. <laughs> close this door. I don't need an 11 year old going. What's going on here? You're like I don't need that. You know what I mean? That's it. Hey, the kids know not to come in. If I got the door closed, you don't want to come in there at that time. It's daddy's time. <laughs> it's daddy's mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. All right, mm. that's a that's a weird but fun place to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's time. Daddy's time. <laughs>